you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting especially since they're helping to fund all the cool projects we have in the works, such as the Positive Head app, the docuseries that I'm intending to begin shooting within the next year, and whatever else we dream up over here at Positive Headquarters to help spread consciousness across the planet. Now, if you're short on time or just super excited for today's topic and want to dive right in and skip these ads, feel free to fast forward about four minutes to get right into today's show. That being said, I strongly encourage you to listen because the reason I'm passionate about my sponsors is because they've made a huge impact in my own life, which is why I've aligned with these organizations. And I firmly believe they can do the same for you too. The first longtime stellar supporter of this show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm extremely passionate about promoting is Purium. It's no mystery that bringing your mind, body and spirit into balance is necessary if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. And as of recording this, it's been about mm, four months since I started taking the Purium Core 4 Superfood products every day. And I can honestly and sincerely say my mind, body, and spirit have never felt more in alignment. If you've been looking for a way to easily get superfoods into your system every day with a simple plan that can help you reestablish a healthier foundation and relationship with food, I cannot recommend for you to start with the Purium 40-Day Ultimate Nutrition Plan, which includes a 10-day metabolic reset and cleanse enough. I spent personally months researching Purium before I jumped in, and now myself and over 150 other positive heads have started with the 40-Day Ultimate Nutrition Plan, and many of us have continued taking the Core 4 products on an ongoing basis daily ever since. I personally intend to take them for the rest of my life because they played a huge role transforming my vibrational state. If you decide to do it, it'll cost you just over $7 a day for the first 40 days and only about $5 a day after. But if you do it the way that I recommend you to do it, the smartest and most beneficial way, it won't cost you anything. I recommend you to just look at where you can reallocate money you are already spending on food each day. Essentially, you're just going to swap out the unhealthiest stuff you're in the habit of purchasing in exchange for Purium Superfoods. And this way, it costs you nothing to participate in the transformation and cleanse. And it creates exponential benefit because now you've replaced something that lowers your vibration with something that is going to make you feel super high in the healthiest kind of way. Just take a few minutes, see where you can cut out five to seven dollars a day and commit to doing it. It's that simple. Also for support, we'll be doing a big group transformation with other positive heads and soul family once each month for support. 
So I recommend, you know, going right now, ordering your 40 day ultimate nutrition plan bundle so that you have it when the next group transformation starts. Procrastination is not your friend. Order it now. You can thank me later because I can assure you, you will not be sorry you've decided to send a message to the universe that you're ready to step up your vibrational game and reclaim your health sovereignty. Just head over to ishoppurium.com. That's spelled I-S-H-O-P-P-U-R-I-U-M.com. Be sure to use the code POSITIVEHEAD, all one word, for either $50 off or a 25% discount, whichever is greater. And also, if you want to learn more details about the Purium products, why I'm so passionate about promoting them beforehand, you can go check out several videos I shot discussing these things in greater detail. You can also hear my interview with the very inspiring founder, David Sandoval, much, much more over at positivehead.com forward slash transformation. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. It is a magical Monday here in the studio as I record. Happy to be here with you yet again to explore some magic, share some wisdom, learn a few things. In the case of today, I'm actually going to read uh, from the book, The Psychic Explorer by V. Van Damme. I've been uh, sporadically reading from that book uh, for the last month or so. And yeah, I felt like uh, starting my Monday morning with a little read. It's a, it's a nice, easy, smooth transition into into the week. It's been, um, yeah, there's been a lot of powerful, intense energy all around. And so I like the idea of uh, connecting in this case with, uh, it is a, okay, so I've explained this book before and I'll I'll do it again real quick. I I originally got this 20 years ago or so. It's um, pretty obscure. I've never seen anyone else or known anyone else who's had it. It's called um, The Psychic Explorer by a guy named V. Van Damme. And it's all about his astral projections out-of-body experiences and his exploring the astral realm uh at the back of the book there is messages channelings uh from different uh cosmic entities if you will and uh, you guys as you know i've had quite a few people on who um you know claim to be a channel and i always say i'm and i share abraham clips all the time who you know is um esther hicks who claims to channel uh, the non-physical entity Abraham. I always say about these sorts of things, I'm really not that concerned with whether or not someone is um, really channeling or, or it's himself or, you know, what is the information? And uh, a lot of times what I found is supposed channeled information is some of my favorite, you know, some of my favorite teachers, like Abraham is my favorite all time. And, um, You know, and so it's like, well, does it really matter? Would it be any weirder that someone is connecting with something non-physical that's coming through them than the fact that they're standing in front of me at all? This whole thing is weird enough, right? (laughs) We've just gotten really used to it. Uh, The fact that any of us are here is pretty pretty, uh, bizarre if you think about it. So um, this particular message is from Beyond the Beyond. So I've, in the past, I've done message from the Earth, uh, Earth Spirit, the Sun, the Red Goddess, a few different ones, and um, this one's from Beyond the Beyond. So let's uh, let's get cosmic today. Let's let's go. Let's jump out there. And uh, before we do, I would like to take a quick moment to read a review on iTunes. Uh, you guys know I love my iTunes reviews. Not only do they help us to reach new people, but certainly help to uh, continue to fuel my fire to you know, continue with this labor of love. So um, if you haven't reviewed on iTunes, would definitely appreciate it if you do. We'll appreciate you if you don't. Either way, it's all good. But uh, this this definitely made my morning reading this review by Primar. Or actually, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> you know what happens? I'll, I'll explain to you guys in case you're wondering. So reviews will come in and then they kind of stack up and I'm like, okay, I just read them in order, you know, on, on the show. So typically I'll read them, but then by the t- I'll see them and then um, a lot of times read them. But then it's like a month later till they come up in the queue. So I completely forgot whatever I read and it just, it's like what lands. That's why a lot of times I'm, I'm, I don't remember reading it or I saw it, but I didn't, you know, read it. And then the synchronicity of it is just, uh, there's been, you, you all have seen a lot of times some really cool synchronicities with what the review says, with what I end up talking about that day. So 
This one, I probably saw it a month or so ago, but I don't have any clue what what is in it. But we're going to find out right now. I don't recall. This came in by Primar5683. Love it with three yellow hearts at the top. And uh, (laughs) that makes me think yesterday my mom asked me, Brandon, what does it mean uh, when someone sent me a green heart? I'm like, uh, they like variation in the color of their hearts, <laughs> emojis. And, uh, she somehow thought that it had had a, like a special or significant meaning because of the color change. It came from her granddaughter to her, my niece. And I thought that was funny. She, you know, she's like reading and she's like, oh, I guess I'm reading into it too much. <laughs> Maybe someone out there uses different colored hearts. Actually, I use colored hearts when I'm writing anything about purium i use a green heart with a little sprouting plant usually so that has some significance i guess but uh, i don't know if my niece meant anything by a purple heart i don't think so but who knows anyway (laughs) i digress love it with three yellow hearts hi brandon my name is priscilla i live in san jose california i've been listening to your podcast for months and tell myself to write a review after every episode There's so much I want to say, but couldn't figure out how to put it all in one review. I'll start off by saying how your podcast saved me from falling into a deep depression. I discovered your podcast while struggling with depression and the beginning of my spiritual awakening. I was confused and frustrated. The first episode I heard, I paused and told myself in excitement, I am not crazy. I'm not alone. I will never forget that moment. My life changed from that point on. I call this time my journey to self-love. I love how transparent and humble you are on the podcast. I'm also separated from my son's dad three years now. I love being a mom. My son is the best thing to ever happen to me, but I can get overwhelmed at times. Listening to your podcast helps me reconnect and move forward with positive attitude. Brandon, Alexa, and other co-hosts keep spreading love, motivation, and inspiration through your podcast. Love you all so much. And another yellow heart. Oh, thank you, Primar. Or Priscilla, she actually gave her name. Uh, thank you, Priscilla, for taking the time to write that review. And it's actually really appropriate that you talked about, um, you know, humility. It's something that I, I definitely uh, strive to um, embody. And, of course, I talked about that on an episode last week. And uh, and then you also talked about my journey to self-love. And it makes me think, like, oh, uh, someone posted this morning in the group um, about self-love. Courtney Scherenberg in the Positive Heads Facebook group uh, earlier today posted an article from Elephant Journal um, about self love, actually, and so now and I and I bookmarked it to talk about it on another episode. But now, after my whole like spiel on the synchronicity of the reviews, and you just brought up humility, which was my last recording last week, and now I just bookmarked that, thinking I would read it another day and talk about it. (sighs) Should I change directions here? Should I uh, diverge from the message from beyond the beyond? Hmm. I imagine there's a timeline where I go both directions. What will I do? Okay. I'm going to let you all put in your energetic uh, requests right now. Um, Even though now we're playing with space time because you're, I'm saying this and you haven't even heard it yet, yet I'm going to take into account that your future self who hears this is going to speak backwards to me in time and tell me, do I read message from beyond the beyond or do I go read this article on Elephant Journal about stop telling single women to love themselves first, um, which of course like relates to what was just said by Priscilla. Um, and by the way, if you're not on the Facebook group, it's positive heads with an S. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just going to make a decision here. Maybe I'll do both. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I have time for both. Let's see. I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to read the Elephant Journal uh, article first. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, see how much time is left, then decide if I read from the message from Beyond the Beyond or not. All right, strap in, guys. Here we go. <laughs> see, I told you I don't really pre-plan these too much. Um, okay, this, uh, this uh, article was written by Lauren Collinson. On Elephant Journal, um, which um, I actually had uh, the founder of Elephant Journal, Waylon, on a, a while back on the podcast. He's great. Um, so I, I love the site. It's um, and like I said, someone uh, posted this in the Positive Heads Facebook group, and it seems like a very relevant, good topic to talk about. So I'm going to read it. Here we go. Um, Stop telling single women to love themselves for- first, Lauren. 
You need to love yourself first before anyone else can love you. Every time I hear this line from someone or see it on some inspirational Instagram post, I scream inside. I usually drop some F-bombs as well. Seriously, F star (laughs) C-K-U. It always makes me think back to a friend of mine who is now married to the same person she's been with since she was 18 years old. She constantly gave me this message. She has never dated. She has never experienced rejection. She has never had her heart broken by men who decide they don't want to commit or men who lose interest for no good reason. She has always been safe and secure in her relationship with that one man. But I find that these are often the exact people spouting this bullshit and bullshit advice that I need to love myself more every time I lament about my perpetually single status. However, my question is this. Do they even know what love yourself means? Why do so many women tell other women that they need to do this in order for someone to find them worthy of love and compassion? Where and when did this start? That start. And why don't we give the same advice to men who run away at the first sight of a relationship challenge? I think many of us interpret it as needing to fix ourselves first, which can be an extremely hurtful message. In the beginning of my singlehood, I would agree that there were definitely things I needed to fix. I needed to learn that I was strong and that I could fight for myself. I needed to learn that no matter what, I would be okay. I needed to learn that I had an identity outside of a relationship and that it was a damn good one. But several years later, after doing all this work on my mind, body, and soul, I'm still single. Single. So what gives? Do I still not love myself enough? I've traveled the world. I've practiced thousands of hours of yoga. I've left a job that sucked the life out of me. I've tightened my circle of friends to only those who truly love me. I've bought a condo. I've been to therapy. I've gotten a dog. I've hired life coaches. And I'm still single and lonely and beyond frustrated. Can we change the message, please? Can we remove this idea that there's something wrong with single women who continue to have poor success with finding a life partner? Can we remove the idea that we don't value ourselves enough? Maybe the men we meet don't stack up to us. Maybe they have issues of their own. Maybe our timing has been off. Maybe we've simply just had bad luck. However, I do want to try to define this notion, since the message is so prevalent. When I really give it some thought, I think loving ourselves is this, and I still cringe at the phrase, by the way. Eating well, exercising, pushing away negative thoughts, keeping good people in our lives, parting ways with those who devalue us, and and being clear with potential partners on what we're looking for and how we want to be treated. But it's hard to fit that into an Instagram post, I know. So we diminish it to those meaningless few words, and the person on the receiving end is supposed to all of a sudden be enlightened, or in my case, get incredibly frustrated and drop F-bombs. So to the women out there who are still searching for love, like me, hear this. We're enough just as we are. We don't need fixing. We don't need healers and shamans. We don't need to climb Mount Everest or attend silent yoga retreats to find ourselves. There are plenty of women who haven't done any of that and are in great relationships. We just haven't met the right man at the right time. But the more we care for and look for ourselves, the better positioned we'll be when he comes along. All right. Well, um, so that was uh, written by Lauren Collinson on Elephant Journal and... um, Apparently, the universe wants me to talk about this today because there was some synchronicity in in that uh, review on iTunes. So here we go. Um, so the very end of it's wonderful. I, I absolutely love it. Um, the very last thing, you know, she kind of sums up here is, is really powerful and so true. It's like... Um, You know, plenty of people, she says, there are plenty of women who have done that and and are in great relationships. It's like, it's like I just posted, you know, I I sort of am like a broken record on on this podcast because it's, it's necessary. You know, I just posted a a meme um, last night and it says, the way you're describing your life is the way it is manifesting. The way you're describing your life is the way it is manifesting. The way you're describing your life is the way it is manifesting. So now tell me, how are things going? So (laughs) this is very relevant to this article. So there's a story here of, you know, what's happened and, you know, with this person and obvious frustration and resistance to what is right. I don't I, I don't like the fact that I'm still single and I'm frustrated, you know, beyond frustrated. Yeah. She said, I'm still single and lonely and beyond frustrated. So. Here's the thing. What we resist persists. What we accept, we move through. What if that becomes no longer when you move into when you move into a 
understanding that you are one with the source that creates and animates all things and all things are flowing to you in divine perfect timing it's all you it's all there every relationship every every everything exists in your vibrational escrow waiting for the right timing to appear in your movie you get out of this idea that um it, it's outside of you. It's all you. There, are, There is no out there out there. Everything is you. I've been single for two and a half years. I've spent most of my adult life in relationships. I, I love being in relationships. And the last two and a half years, this may be, if I think about it, it might be the longest in I've been single since I was 15. It's a long time ago. <laughs> and um, so here's the thing. Here's the difference. Uh, I'm not resisting do do i do i like the idea of finding that perfect partner who's just this beautiful reflection absolutely i think that's in every one of us like we all like the one right i think that is programmed somewhere whether you're into you know open the idea of open relationships monogamous relationships no matter what i think we all crave that that significant special partner in our lives right and um i certainly do and but it's my energy approaching it is not beyond frustrated. It is when you talk about the self love piece of it, it's like I am, I, I am, I am authentically enjoying my own company so much in the things that are bubbling up for me and the types of relationships that are bubbling up for me. And I'm finding the joy and beauty in all of that and doing yoga and self care and these things. But that's not the. F- that's not to fix to get this relationship. The relationship comes in the perfect season in divine timing. It's not if, but when, right? And I l- relax about the when because it's guaranteed when you understand and know that it's all you. It's all an extension of you. It's, 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 it's all, you know, you are it all. It's not, you, you, you're so worthy. You're beyond worthy. You don't need to do more yoga. You don't need to eat better. You don't need to, any of those things. Yeah, they're all reflections of your state, but ultimately when you can move right within yourself and you you are you are content with where you're at and trusting the process of the unfolding right if i had had a relationship let's say uh, a, a month after and and that's actually how it went down for me before so my last relationship was two and a half years ago before you know and and that lasted two and a half years um and the, the break between that partner and the one before it was like a month. So there was no, there was hardly any lag. And so, you know, now my soul wants to have this time period to enjoy and cultivate, work on myself. I, I'm in no big hurry. I, I have so much faith and trust in the unfolding. It's what we resist persists. So that frustration, if the lovely Lauren can come to a point where she is so accepting of the the process of her life and trusting that she is so worthy um, of what it is that she seeks. It 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 is inevitable that it will, will appear for her. It's it's an, it's inevitable. This is how the I've seen these things. It's like I I told the story for my entire life. I'm I am going to manifest all this abundance in business. You know, I just told the story and I had no proof of it anywhere, but I believed it in my soul so much. Next thing I know, uh, you know, I have an Inc. 500 fastest growing private company in the U.S. with no startup com- capital, achieving what one in ten thousand entrepreneurs do. I use that as an example because it's a good one. It's like this is something that's really like unusual to reach but i was a vibrational match for it so it can't help but come into my reality it took a while from the from the moment of knowing that would happen to me to it actually unfolding there was a lot of time right but if during that time i had been telling the story of man this sucks this should be different this should you know i'm beyond frustrated it hadn't happened yet and i'm not going to say i never had those frustration points and i'm not putting lauren down for feeling what she's feeling i get it i I understand i'm just i'm just suggesting her or anyone going through this expand your perspective you know there is a there is a natural flow to your life and it's not necessarily in the time frames you um you uh you think they should be right or in the way like for example my entrepreneurial success came in an industry i had no plan of of being in right but the natural flow took me there when i let go and just sort of followed the signs turned over the rock 
boxes that went down the path and it just led me to what was a vibrational match for that what which I was offering. So that becomes the thing. Just get into a state, moving into a deep state of trust. You are so, so worthy. And this actually makes me think of a... Um, a clip that I just saw from Phil Good um, talking about the difference between 3D, 4D, and 5D perspectives. And actually, I think I'm going to share it now because it was really, really good. It's very short. It's like a minute or two minutes because it was like a quick Instagram post. But uh, let's take a listen to that real quick. This is a quick discourse on the difference between 3D, 4D, and 5D. Someone functioning with a 3D mindset would probably say something to the effect of, I don't understand why I haven't met my perfect person, I just don't get it. So they're operating within a small container, horse with blinders, narrow-sided, they're usually governed by their emotions, and they're depending on something external in order to feel happy. Someone with a 4D mentality would probably say something like, I've been doing really profound shadow work on myself, clearing limiting beliefs, and because of this, I just know in my gut that change is coming, that something amazing is about to arrive into my reality. So they're highly aware, but there's still a component of time. It's like they see their manifestation as something separate, and they may question, like, I wonder when this will happen. Now, someone within 5D will say like change has been here right so they're full from within they're multi-dimensional they're the builders of reality and there's no separation between what's outside and what's inside so they won't talk about time because they're not governed by it and when it does arrive they'll be like that was mine anyways so I, I like this, you know, it, it definitely gives you per, some perspective here. This very 60, you know, it's like 60 seconds. Uh, and by the way, uh, at Phil Good Life uh, on Instagram is where to follow him. And and he was also uh, a guest on episode 762 of this podcast. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to check out more from Phil, definitely. He's amazing. So 3D, the 3D and 4D, I really, really like, you know, uh, a 3D perspective governed by emotions fulfilled by external circumstances. And that really is the, that's the clincher. It's like, you know, most people are doing something like work in order to have something like money in order to be something like happy. Yet the way reality actually works is you be in the vibrational field of what it is you want. You be something like happy, you find yourself doing and having the things that are a match for that. Right. And so really you know moving to a place where you get beyond you're at peace with what is right not governed by your emotions a master someone who embraces whatever shows up because they know it's exactly what they need to lead them to the next greatest and grandest version of themselves right so that's moving beyond the 3d you know uh, 4d change is coming knowing it's coming i've been i've been doing work maybe clearing limiting beliefs i feel like this is a very necessary process um and yet you know the way he he said it is like okay there's still some level of separation it's like you know so it's a little tricky for me the way he's describing 5d because it's like well change has been here from within of course it's here now it is here now um but we are from my perspective and this is where i have a little different spin on this or take uh, than the way phil described it it's like we are living from the ultimate perspective it's all happened it's already in, in you know there is in no time there is no time from the ultimate perspective but where we're at now currently it there we are living in um in uh a reality where we are using time to give us experience and to give us contrast. So, um, you know, having that perspective of, yeah, it, it, of course it's, it's like, I, I feel like I'm a mashup of the two things he's talking about because when it's coming, it, it's like, yeah, I don't have the relationship today. I can see there's a relative truth of, I live in a place of time now. And there's another truth where there is no time. I get that. But as of now, uh, that my, my perception is, is I'm not in a relationship with my next partner, not as of this moment, but I know when it does, when the, when the timing is right, it, it will be there and uh, it will be very much like, well, duh, of course. And so I think, I think that's one of the things that, and of course he's navigating, he's, he's got so much powerful, incredible information and he's navigating, you know, how do we put these things into words? How do we explore? How do we, how do we look at this from these multidimensional perspectives and really understand and ground it in? And this isn't the simplest thing ever, right? By any means, the thing that I am confident of, I'm so confident of, if you, if you can be it, you'll see it be in vibrational match of what it would feel like to have that be 
content with what is. Don't be resisting where you're at. What if you've put down the fight to find the partnership? What if you said, I'm completely resigning to it. I know it'll happen and I'm kind of putting it aside and forgetting about it. It's just not, it's just not this thing that creates tension within my system any longer, right? It's not um, something that I'm, I'm resisting any longer. It's like I've been talking about a lot lately, how they train, tr- uh, train race car drivers, right? <laughs> they train them, whatever you do, don't look at the wall if you're spinning out. Why? Because you'll hit the wall every time you look away from the wall. Don't look to where the quote unquote problem is. It's it's you're going to hit the wall. What you resist persists where attention goes. Energy flows. What are you drumming up the vibration of beating? You know, as Abraham talks about beating the drum of I'm sure I could find some great clips of Abraham talking about this very thing and would recommend anyone to go search it. Um, but what are you dr- beating the drum of is always, you know, w- the thing to really look at with, um, with yourself. And as far as, you know, self-love and sort of the, the premise of the whole thing was this telling them, and I really never got to the core of it. Uh, and, and I guess suppose I'll do so now is like saying that you've got to get, have self-love in order to find a partnership. Actually that's, yeah, I agree fully with Lauren. It's like, there's people who are like, a hot mess in a relationship. But guess what? They're calling in a vibrational reflection of the hot mess that they are, right? So they're not self-love. They're the antithesis of self-love and they're in a relationship, right? And uh, that that's everywhere. So yeah, that is not the answer. Now, you're always, because there is no out there, out there, everything that shows up as a vibrational reflection of you in some way, shape or form, relationships, whatever it may be, um, And so if you can, this is where it gets important to attract the type of relationship you want. Well, the more well-adjusted you are within yourself, healthy, happy, self-love filled, you're not looking for your other half, you're creating a whole, then you attract another whole that's coming together not to complete one another, but to celebrate one another and enjoy one another. Not because that it, it's it's filling some some hole or need, which a lot of relationships, that's where they're at in their evolution. The souls come together and they do this this dance of I feel incomplete, you feel incomplete, or match is in we're compatible matches here. Now let's let's do a you know somewhat dysfunctional dance until this breaks, right? Um, and and that's sort of how it goes. So I think that's sort of the dividing line between you know the more you work on self love, the more um, content you are within yourself, the more the reflection that does show up when it's in divine timing will be you know uh, you know imagine the difference between me being full of like, you know, self doubt and all these things and pain and, and haven't worked through my shadows and, you know, healed any trauma that's there, finding a relationship in that state versus having done that work, right? The reflection is going to be very, very, very different. So I think that's the message that's maybe being lost in these, uh, and where, uh, Lauren's frustration is coming from partially with, uh, you know, Instagram posts and things like that. Obviously I've taken almost 30 minutes to explain, uh, that doesn't, uh, this show does not fit into a meme. So, um, but it's always back to where, you know, where attention goes, energy flows. What are you focusing on next? If you start telling everything is a story, Bashar talks about, you know, permission slips give yourself a permission slip to create what you want next what is what is the story of how it unfolds i'm telling the story of you know hey i'm two and a half years single and i couldn't be more content and i'm in no hurry whatsoever it could happen tomorrow it could happen in 10 years doesn't matter because i have so much trust and faith in the process of my life and i certainly don't need this other to fulfill something within myself yesterday i drummed up emotions of love vibration that were so strong i was crying it's so powerful it's all within you love is you start moving away from this lo- love that is this thing that you get outside of yourself which goes to the next p- I, it's so funny how this is queued up synchronistically uh today and how we did a uh detour because it was obvious it became obvious to me and as i dive deeper i can see the last two posts on instagram i made which is positive underscore head by the way um i was resharing that clip from from um Phil Good and before that it was this by Ram Das. The romantic quality and I just remember this right now. The romantic quality of love which is between separate entities is a doorway into the deeper love. 
A lot of people experience a quality they call love, but they're doing it with their mind. They're not really opening their hearts fully. They are loving, meaning I am attracted to or I'm attached to. When we talk about love versus fear, for example, we're talking about being versus fear or unity versus separateness would be the other way of saying it. So I would say that when the fear dissipates, You are feeling at home in the universe, meaning your identity with your separateness isn't overriding your feeling of connection with everything to the point that you're feeling cut off and vulnerable, which is where the root of the fear is. So as you cultivate that unitative quality, the fear dissipates. So the relation is one between love and fear, but it's not the love in the sense of I love you. It's a sense that we are together in the space of love. And that really is like, you know, the Osho quote, love becomes an overflowing. Whether the other is there or not, it is just overflowing from you, right? That's what we're moving into. And then it becomes like, ah, oh, whatever comes into my field is going to be perfect and perfect timing. And I just trust and I'm relaxed about it all. I'm surrendering to the flow of this beautiful, beautiful dance that is my life. I have so much trust and faith in what is to come and how it should come. And it, it, and it may be, I may have an idea about a direction to go or let's say a potential partner in this case, you know, and it's that or something greater. If I'm ever exploring a connection with someone in that way, it's so relaxed now. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. I'm attracted to this person. There's a connection here. Cool. Let's explore this. Oh, that didn't quite Uh, manifest in a way that felt in the flow. Perfect. All right. Oh, it worked out. Perfect. Oh, it didn't work out. Perfect. This or something better for me, right? It doesn't say anything about there's nothing wrong with the other. I don't need to judge the other. I don't need to get mad. I don't need to have expectation. You know, uh, you know, expectation is premeditated resentment. (laughs) I don't need to do that. I don't need to have premeditated resentment about this other potential partnership it's like i'm just exploring here with joyous wonder like trusting the 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 beauty of the unfoldment right the way you are describing your life is the way it is manifesting the way you are describing your life is the way it is manifesting the way you are describing your life is the way it is manifesting so now tell me how are things going what's your story I'm sticking, that's my story. I'm sticking with it. Hope you, uh, <laughs> hope you find some, some goodness in the story. Hope you make it your own if you're out there and looking for love, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Who's that song? Oh, who did, who sung? Now I'm thinking, I don't know if songs are mashing together in my head. Look, what was the one that, um, was it Eddie Murphy? Uh, he did like a funny, uh, funny, funny rendition of looking for sh- nub or something. I don't know. Long time ago. Anyway, I digress again. I <laughs> will leave you to the gay today with a song. I guess I'll play the same song. The song I, I queued up funny enough. You know, well, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be reading from message from beyond the beyond. And um, it's by I'll play it anyway. Light years from home. And uh, it's by Blue Tech. Hope you enjoy. Till next time. Journey well. Love you all so, so much. We'll pick up. We'll check out beyond the beyonds message in another day in divine timing when it's meant to come through. Till then, journey well. And don't forget to love yourself and everyone that crosses your path. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out.
Thank you.